Common buckthorn, scientifically known as Ramnus cathartica, is a highly invasive shrub. Originating from Europe, it can now be found throughout the Midwest with heavy infestations in Wisconsin and Minnesota. It appears to have experienced significant growth or expansions following years of drought, outcompeting native plants during this dry time. Buckthorn was introduced to the United States in the 1800s, sold as landscaping barrier between buildings and properties. Buckthorn was popular in landscaping due to its high growth density. As well, its berries attract birds. It then began appearing as hedge tree, whose thick growth made it more difficult to cut. The nursery industry then ceased to sell the bush in the 1930s. Over the years, it began to reproduce in high densities, and because of its rapid growth and invasive nature, it was restricted to import, sell, or transport in some states. Buckthorn easily spreads in yards or woodlots by birds that consume the berries. A tree uprooted in a storm or damaged during a logging operation will send up new growth and will end up producing more saplings. Cutting down the buckthorn tree without killing the roots will result in the re-sprouting of new growth on the same stump. In addition, seeds in the ground may take several years to germinate and grow. It is easy to see how a single female tree with thousands of berries can soon overtake a woodlot. Once present in a woodlot, buckthorn soon has a negative impact on native plants. Buckthorn plants bud leaves in the spring before most natives. Since these leaves remain vibrant well into fall, long after native plants have gone dormant, they outcompete other plants for resources. In just a few short years, the buckthorn will spread rapidly around the woodlot, developing a solid wall of trees with little growing underneath the canopy. Woodlot owners, farmers, or hunters could lose their long-term recreational and harvesting land if buckthorn grows out of control. Although mature native trees will continue to thrive, buckthorn will extinguish lower canopy growth including ferns, trillium, and other wild flowers. Moreover, wildlife will avoid the area leaving the woods with little value for nature walk, bird watching, or hunting. Buckthorn is not known to be a host plant for any native species. To date, various attempts at developing or finding a biological control have been unsuccessful. Therefore, eradication of buckthorn on a woodlot can only be reduced or controlled by efforts of the landowner. Since buckthorn produces green leaves in early spring before most other plants, the first level of screening or identification should take place by the third week of April. In early October, buckthorn is easy to identify by its still vibrant green leaves. Buckthorn leaves will be egg-shaped and have veins starting from the middle, spreading out to the outside. The edge of the leaf is bordered with very small teeth. The interior color of buckthorn is orange. It can be identified by pulling back the stem or exposing the bark underneath to view the branch's interior. Larger stems will often have a small thorn at the end of the branch. Also at the end of the branch, there are buds that are shaped like the hoof of a deer, hence the name buckthorn. In the fall, female trees will produce berries that become a dark purple. If there are larger buckthorn trees, above 15 feet in height, there will likely be significant numbers of new growth surrounding them. Keep in mind that plants such as prickly ash, winterberry, and alder often are mistaken for buckthorn. One should be sure that they are treating buckthorn and not native plants. Buckthorn can be treated and controlled, though it is not an easy task. If possible, the best approach is to identify areas of buckthorn when there are few trees. Each tree should be destroyed starting with the berry producing female tree. Pull, spray, or otherwise treat each shrub or tree, following up annually looking for new growth to pull or spray. If buckthorn has a significant presence in a local wooded area, a more drastic and labor intensive effort lies ahead. Early detection and treatment is best. The female shrubs should be tackled first and hopefully early in the summer before the berries are ripe. 
If possible, with larger infested woodlots, brush containing berries can be burned. The best times to eradicate buckthorn are in the early spring or late fall when temperatures are more favorable and bugs are only a minor nuisance. Treatment can also take place in the summer or winter, but most especially when a landowner has time and has help. The elimination of buckthorn is a labor-intensive effort, but worthwhile if the woods can be saved. When buckthorn has been removed from an area, it can be replaced with a variety of different native plants, trees, and flowers such as maples and red baneberry. Regardless of the method employed, the goal is to kill the roots either by pulling the shrub and letting the roots dry or cutting and preventing new growth. When pulling the shrub, it opens up a patch of soil, giving fallen berries a chance to germinate. A simple eradication method is to cut down the tree and cover the stump with a tin can or a black plastic bag. After a couple of years, the roots will wither and die. Saplings can be pulled and laid on the ground. Larger shrubs can be pulled by a weed wrench or can be uprooted by a tractor. The use of appropriate herbicides is often utilized when eradicating large and dense buckthorn infestations. Cut stump and basil bark spraying are also two techniques popular with larger stands of buckthorn. The cut stump method involves cutting down the tree and painting the stump with an herbicide. An inexpensive brush killer found at local hardware stores can be used to treat buckthorn stumps. If it is not possible to apply the brush killer within a few minutes of cutting, a stronger herbicide and oil mixture is recommended. A product such as Garlon or Progeny mixed with bark oil or diesel fuel will kill the roots and can be applied at a later time. Basil bark spraying is the easiest method as many trees can be treated in a short time with relatively little work. Using a handheld or backpack sprayer, spray the base of the tree. Hold the spray nozzle approximately 16 inches above the ground, creating a 4-inch band of spray. In order to eliminate waste, one can also just paint the herbicide and oil mixture on a cut stump rather than using a sprayer. Spray can be applied anytime and will kill the tree within a year. The herbicide and oil mixture penetrates the bark and kills the roots. If trees are less than five feet in height, a foliar spray may be applied to kill the trees. Unless applied when native plants are dormant, the broadleaf herbicide will kill native growth. Thus, the secret to apply the spray in early spring before native plants have leaves, or in the fall after the leaves of native plants have turned color. This spraying may be applied in the manner similar to how one might spray lawn weeds. It is essential to cover approximately 90% of the tree canopy. The oil leaves a sheen on the tree, making it possible to see which trees have been treated. A blue or red dye can be added to the spray for greater identification. Overspray should be closely monitored, otherwise it can cause herbicide exposure to native plants. Brush killers are available for purchase at most hardware or shopping centers. They can be applied at full strength to a cut stump. In order to penetrate the bark of a tree, these herbicides need to be mixed with an oil such as bark oil. They can also be mixed with diesel fuel. The mixture ratio is one part herbicide to four parts oil. For example, if diesel fuel is used, four gallons of diesel is mixed with one gallon of herbicide. Since diesel fuel can only be sold in yellow gas cans, a separate container should be properly labeled as containing both products. Once mixed, the spray is stable and can be stored for some time. The oil and herbicide mixture should not be stored in the sprayer overnight as the gaskets can be destroyed. Triple rinsing the sprayer is recommended after each use. Do not store herbicide in sprayers and avoid use of herbicides near water sources. Caution should always be used in mixing the oil and herbicide mixture. Gloves and safety glasses should be used in mixing or pouring at all times. 
All storage should be in appropriately labeled containers. Check with manufacturer directions for specific instructions. Take caution when using herbicide in the spring and summer since it can kill native plants. Buckthorn is an extremely invasive plant that is spreading rapidly. Without control efforts and prevention, it can cause harm to our environment, our community, and wildlife habitats. Being able to identify and properly eradicate this invasive species can help avert future growth.